Go. There we go. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we're going to have a quick look at windowing functions. Uh, they are one of the most powerful features of T-SQL, and we use them a lot. Uh, all my contact details are on the screen. Any questions on this or anything else remotely SQL Server BI related, then please feel free to give me a shout. Quick little bit about me before we start. I help run SQL Relay, SQL Bits. If you're not registered for SQL Bits yet, then that's coming next week. Still time to get registered. Uh, and also the Birmingham SQL Server and Azure user groups. Uh, I'm a SQL Server MVP and I run Pebble Frog. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Uh, what are windowing functions? We're going to be looking at what they are, how we use them, a few gotchas, and then some examples of the different uh, different functions. We don't have long, so we're going to skip through. Uh, basically, in normal T-SQL, historical T-SQL, each calculation in a row can refer to other or other data in that same row. So this field plus that field, but in the same row of data. Windowing functions allow you to uh, expand that and refer to fields in other rows of the same uh, same query. So for example, the lag function lets you refer to the previous row and use that in conjunction with the current row in the same calculation. Lead, uh, the opposite, refers to the following row. And there's a whole series of these functions that allow you to navigate forwards and backwards within, that's a very nice close-up of the beard, Rob, thanks. Um, <clears throat> allows you to, um, to refer to pretty much any data around the data set that you want to, want to look at. So they were introduced back in SQL 2005 uh, after a campaign by Itzik Bengan to get them included. If you want to know more, then Itzik is doing a session at SQL Bits into a whole hour on this topic, so go and look at that. Uh, they were massively enhanced in SQL 2012 to include a lot more functionality. One of the main purposes uh, that they're used for is to improve the execution plan and performance of your queries to avoid expensive sub-queries on, on your data. And yeah, they are phenomenally powerful in a number of different, different ways. So let's look at some examples. So here we've got a normal select statement from an orders table, and we're putting in our windowing function in the middle. So here we're using the first value function and the first value of the order value. But we're partitioning this, this data into a window by customer ID. So you can see here different customer IDs are grouped into customer ID 1, customer ID 2, then 3. So they're all individual windows of our data. Within each window, we can then order it by any field we want, in this case the order number. And within that particular win sorted window, we then take the first value of the order value, which will be that one, that one, and those ones. And for every row we calculate, that first value is then copied into that particular row. So in the first uh, customer, we see this first value of 10 in every single row. So this could be useful for if you wanted to have the date of a customer's first order. And then you could very easily work out the time that customer has been with you by a simple date diff of the first order date and the current order date, something like that. So let's move on. If we wanted to get the last value, then we can either use the first value function, but instead of ordering it by the order number ascending, we order by order number descending. And that then reverses the order and we get the last value in every single row. Now instead of using first value, there is actually a built-in last value function, which we would have thought would be great to use. But this is where we get our first major gotcha. If we just use last value on its own and partition by the customer ID and customer number, then we get the wrong values. Instead of taking this value of 20 and using it for every single row, it doesn't. It just replicates the same value across. And that's because <clears throat> windowing functions by default can only look back, they can't look forward. So if we've ordered our data by order number, then we can, each row can only see previous order numbers rather than the ones after it. So that's why the, the last value of 15 here is because it is the last value of the current rows we've currently processed, 10 and 15. It doesn't know about this value afterwards. So we have to change that default behavior and override it with um, um, an enforced window frame to expand the scope to include following rows. And we do that by using uh, rows between unbounded, preceding, and following. So by default, we see everything up to the current row, which is preceding up to the current row. We can change that to everything between preceding and following, 
which gives us everything before and after the um, um, the current row being calculated. So if we put that into the um, into our query, we then get our last value of order value, and we have exactly the same partitioning, but we add in this extra row in the middle, or which just forces it to expand the scope to everything before and everything after. And now, last value does indeed work across um, across all of our data correctly. So normally when you're looking at windowing functions, you go through a load of them and they work perfectly. You make one small change like that to last value and suddenly nothing works. And normally that, that's why. So we get the same issue with average. So with an average order value, well, if we didn't include the, um, the change in the window frame, then the average for this row would be the average of rows to date rather than the average of everything. Now, in some cases, that's perfectly valid. That's what you want. But do be aware of when you need to use these and when you don't. So on to probably the most useful one that, or the most commonly used windowing function, and that is row number. Row numbers simply provide a sequence number of all of your data. And you don't have to partition the data. You could, if you wanted to, leave off that partition. And it would go from 1 to 7, is it? Something like that. Uh, but in this case, we've partitioned by customer, and so we get 1 to 3, 1 to 2, 1, and 1. Now, why is this useful? Well, <clears throat> you may want to assign each customer uh, an individual number. Um, or one of the main uses that we use it for here is for deduplicating data. So here we've got a CTE that defines the everything from orders, but we're going by order number and ordering it by date descending. And we're giving that a field called RN, row number. So what this does is it says for each individual order number, give them all a number from 1 to X, uh, with, the, with 1 being the most recent, because we're ordering it by date descending. So in the example data, we've got order number 102 has got two different values. So there's a duplicate record here. And one's got a date of the 1st of Jan, the, number one, the second one's got a date of the 2nd of Jan. And so we get row number one, and then that one's called row number two. So by filtering our CTE to only row number equals one, it filters out that duplicate row. And we end up with a nice clean set of data with no duplicates. When we're loading data and dimensions, and even in some cases fact data into data warehouses, it's absolutely critical to filter out these duplicates that you get in most nasty, horrible, old legacy systems. And this is a very, very common approach that we use to, use to do that. So there are a lot of different functions available. Uh, we've, uh, we've got sum, average, count, row number, rank, um, multiple different versions of rank, whether it's um, if you've got two values that are equivalent, then do they sh say, uh, share the same rank? If they're both rank three, then do you want to rank four or not? Or do you want to jump straight to rank five? Well, rank and dense rank do have slightly different functionality to cope with those scenarios. Percent rank, we've got lead and lag we've discussed before, first value, last value, etc., and some uh, cumulative distribution, percentile, etc. So there's a lot of very powerful functionality in this. Um, and yeah, if, if you've got a query which has got a lot of subqueries and logic to try and filter things out and grab values from different aspects of the data set, then look at windowing functions and see if they can help you. So, as I said, if you want to know more about this, then Itzik Bengan, who is the um, person who takes the credit for pushing this into SQL Server, uh, he's also written books about it. He's doing a, an hour session on SQL, uh, at SQL Bits on either the Friday or the Saturday. So, uh, go up there, register, and learn more about it. So, thank you very much. I'm a minute early. Any questions? I've got a question. Are there any new functions in 2014 and 2012? <coughs> 2012, yes. Um, 2012 was a big enhancement to the functionality. Um, most of this is only available in, in, in 2012. Uh, um, in 2014 and 16, then no, there's no, no new functionality that I'm aware of. Okay, excellent. Well, you are still Sorry. a bit early, so I've just, you're going to get the, what are you going to get? You're going to get the, there you go. Any more questions if we've got 30 seconds left? Any more questions? Type faster, that's all I can say. Otherwise, we're going to hand over to Rob.